Hi there, welcome to Gong Show Garage. Today we're going to talk about the Ego Power Station. Now some people sometimes will call this a generator and really it's not. What it is is it's storing all the energy from your Ego batteries. As you can see I have quite a few here so what I did is I rallied up all my neighbors who have Ego equipment and I mooched theirs. But if you get the self-propelled lawnmower, which I have, they come with the 7.5 amp battery. Any of the little weed eaters and all the other stuff come with the 2.5 amp battery. The backpack blowers and a bunch of the other equipment come with the 5 amp battery. So I rallied up all my friends' batteries and I put them here just so we could do this demo for you. When you go to buy this, you can buy it from, I do believe it's homedepot.ca for Canada, homedepot.com in the States. The reason I like this one is it comes in three different options. So you can get this with either two 7.5 amp batteries or four 2.5 amp batteries. So what I did for you today on this one is I'm showing you I've got three 7.5s on here and one 5 amp. At any given point, even if I've got a load on here, I can what they do called hot swapping and I can pull this battery off and throw another battery on. So now you'd say how do I know which batteries are low? Well, if you look at over here, this is an app that's on my phone. It's You can download it from Google Play Station or from your iPhone. And what you can do is it'll tell you at what strength your batteries are at. So I'll go back into a little bit more detail, but, but while we're playing with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that I've got two lights hooked up onto here. Uh, this right now, saying I, with this amperage draw, I should have these lights on for approximately 16 hours. So if I pull a battery off, say the seven and a half off, you'll see that it'll change. That's the difference when battery makes. Now if we go back over to here, you can see it's showing no battery in that one spot. That's how accurate it is. So you can also know at any given time. So let's say this battery was low. I can take one of my other two and a halfs, drop it on. It'll repopulate. It'll figure out how much time I have. And as you can see, the app on the phone is already showing that that battery that I'm putting on there is low powered. So I know at any given time, any battery, what strength they're in. So you see, it only gave me an extra hour. So we're going to keep this one aside, so we'll show you how we're going to charge it using our solar system and our generators, if our power is out. So the main reason I have this one is a power backup system, and because i am uh, got a weaker solar system, because my batteries have got the lead acid, they're getting a little bit weak down there, as you can see. I use this at night when that gets weak. I plug everything into here. i got a pure sine wave inverter built into here so that means I can run computers, my Samsung ice maker fridge, all that stuff without damaging any electronics. Those are things that I would not plug into my standard economical inverter for my solar system. I would plug that stuff into my Generac which is also a pure sine wave but I would not plug it into there but we're going to get back to, you to that in a minute and show you the difference. I just want to talk about a few more of the features while we're here on this unit. So there's a little hidden door underneath here and that's where you put your cords. And the cords that it comes with is the power to plug into here and this is the battery charger. This will charge all the batteries when you have it in charge mode. And it comes with a cord that comes off of here and goes into the back and that will charge the station. But right now we have it in a consumption mode so now it's using the power that it has on it to supply me. So for example, two o'clock in the morning, boom, my power goes out, my alarm goes off to let me know that my power is out. I can run downstairs to my garage, grab a bunch of my batteries, throw it on here, run upstairs, put it in my kitchen. I can plug in my fridge and my freezer right away from the kitchen into here. Run it throughout the night. A uh, full-size fridge should run off of two of these batteries for a minimum of 12 hours, so that's plenty of backup time. As you can see, I've got access to a lot of batteries, so I could probably go several days without a concern. So let's say I'm laying in bed, because I'm too lazy to go check on it, and it's showing me right now that my batteries are doing okay, but let's say they were to get low. I'd go, let's say number one is my freezer, which would be this light. I could go, okay, my freezer is sacrificeable. If I keep the door closed, it'll stay frozen. That'll allow me more run time off my other plug, which I can also turn off remotely. So I'll turn them both back on. 
Same with the USB ports. It comes with four USB point, point ports and they are the fast charge USBs. I can turn those on and off as well by hitting the button on the phone here. And now that'll populate the power to the USB ports. I can also turn these switches on and off from the face unit. So if my phone isn't working, I can still do all this manually. Same thing with my USB ports. I can turn them off. I can turn them on. So let's briefly touch base on what the power of this thing can do. And this will do 2,000 watts continuous. So what that means is, let's say I've got a fridge, the old style fridge that has a compressor in it. When it first fires up, it'll draw a lot of power. Well, this will let you peak out at 3,000 watts before it'll trip. So you've got a sudden impact power of 3,000 watts, but it'll continuously run at 2,000. So once that capacitor is full, it zaps the compressor going, it's running, it'll drop back down to a lower running rate, which is usually a third of what the startup power is, and this thing will handle it. So that's why I'm saying I could have my both my freezer and my fridge plugged in overnight. Now let's say I get up in the morning and I've been running the fridge and freezer on at night and my batteries are low. I could run quite a bit off of here, my computers, a few, quite a few things, and still have lots of power. But let's say my batteries do get low. If the power comes back on the next morning, great. I just bring it back downstairs, plug it into the wall, and it charges by, th by this unit here. Now, what I do is, because I tie it into my solar system, what I can do is I can actually plug it in to here. I'm going to put some hair around it. So what I've done is now I've plugged it into here. Now I'm going to plug it back into my solar system because my batteries are full right now because it was sunny. You can see the lights all populate to let me know that it's in the charge mode. And if I go into here, it's going to tell me how many hours and how many minutes i got to go before it'll charge. So as you can see, I've got all healthy batteries on here, so it's saying I ah, no need to charge yet. But let's throw one of those dead batteries that we had on here. So now you can see we're at no battery state. I'm going to drop on a battery that needs to charge. You can see it's populating. It's going through the charge cycles. Now it's telling me that's at 29%. So it'll always find the weakest, the lowest charged battery. It's let me know it's a two and a half amp hour. My other one's a five amp, seven and a half, seven and a half. If I'm ever confused, because I've had too many disabling beverages, on the side of here it's actually numbered to show you. That's one, that should be three, that's two, and that's four. So, and on here, it shows you battery one, two, three, four and it's actually telling me which size batteries on each one. So right now the two and a half amp one is taking some power and it would take approximately one hour to bring the system back up to full power. So right now I'm using my solar system which is very minuscule if you come out here and take a look. You've seen this in our other videos. I've got one little small panel here which is I think 110 watt. That's a 200 watt. I've got a mix max of uh, panels up there and I've got the little hoping board that I put together. So as you can see today it's not all that sunny so I'm probably not pulling in that much amperage but with my batteries being full I can afford to sacrifice some power to top up my batteries back up again. So let's say now we're in a stormy condition my batteries for my solar system are drawn down and I don't have enough power in my solar system to recharge this. I can actually unplug this Actually, I'm just going to do the shortcut for video purposes. I'm just going to use my extension cord. And I could go over to my Generac. I wouldn't, of course, plug this in until it's up and running. But we're going to pause the video for a sec. We're going to fire this up. So the audio will be a little bit rough because it'll be running on here. But I'm going to try and show you what the f that it's actually charging the batteries on here. As you can see, the display's out right now. So that means the unit's not producing any power for 110, and it's not consuming any power because it's not charging. So we're going to pause for a moment. We're going to start this bad boy up like you've seen in our other videos. We'll get it running, and we'll show you that we'll plug it into here, and we'll recharge our batteries from this. Okay, as you can see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the inverter. It populates this. And now you can see it'll go into the charge mode. 
it's now hunting for the weakest battery and it's going to start charging that battery. Now it's already showing us how long it's going to take. It's assessing all the batteries and that'll drop down until it finds out exactly what I need to charge it at. So it's still dropping, so it'll probably drop down to probably about 40 minutes to charge that one battery. So that's how I can tie that into my system. I have this as first protocol. It's drawing such a little amount of power, I can actually run it on quiet mode while I'm recharging this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this off. And I'm just going to go back to my solar system for a second here. Put it back in. It's charging off the solar now. But I just wanted to show you some of the features on the Ego power station. And what I want to do one more time is just show you how easy it is to hot swap the batteries. And now I will take it out of the charge mode. I'm just unplugging this. Both these cords will fit underneath here, by the way. The big back one and that one. I'll power it up. I will turn on my... Well, actually, I can do it right from here, from the phone. Now I'm back on here, and I'll turn my lights back on. So another thing I want to show you right now, we are on consumption mode. You can see I got that weaker battery on there right now. So let's say all our batteries are down on power. I've come down, I've started up my Generac, but I'm thinking, okay, these don't have fans in them, so they don't charge these batteries as fast as the regular chargers do. So the plus is, if you have a self-propelled lawnmower or any of the equipment that has the rapid charger with it, or you can buy the rapid charger separately, but if you have the self-propelled mower or any of the high-end equipment, you already have one of these already. This, as you know, if you already have this equipment, will charge one of these big 7.5 amp batteries and approximately, on average for me, anyway from 40 minutes. I've never had to take an hour, but some people say it could take up to an hour. The 5 amp ones, this size here, uh, they're usually about 35 minutes to 40 minutes. And the 2.5 amp on here charging is probably about 20. This is the smaller charger. This one here, as you saw in our other videos, this is a 550 watt charger. So that's why it will charge the bigger ones a lot quicker. This little charger will charge the big ones as well, but they take longer. So what I would do is I'd put my two and a half on here, my bigger batteries on here, I'd fire up my Generac, and I would shut down my station, put it into charge mode, and what I'm going to do is we're going to pause the video because I'll start the generator. The thing I forgot to show is that these come with the straps for the battery charger. So this can be mounted onto here permanently. You just can't access the cord storage. But 
I take it around all the time. I just leave it strapped up to here and I put the cords in a separate bag. Oh, and I always leave this one permanently attached on the back. It doesn't seem to get in the way. But they think of everything. So I just wanted to show you a quicker way if you do have this system. And you're, uh, let's say you take these chargers over to a friend's place who has power. Or you've got a generator. How you can speed up the charging process. So you're ready for that night to get back to using this if you're going to run another night. Because we all know running a generator, even a quiet one like this, throughout the night is dangerous because you don't know how long it's got for fuel with the load changes and the sound of it's you know damn well somebody's gonna hunt that thing down because they can hear it for miles and if you have the great big generator it's gonna be even noisier so first of all you have no noise at night and it runs silent and there's no emissions I can have this running in the middle, middle of my kitchen without worrying about toxifying whereas this one I gotta have the patio door back open having the cord run off of this into the house to run my fridge and freezer. So that leads me into a security risk and that being a noisy unit would attract people whereas this one does everything I want without the noise or the pollution. But the major number one thing that I really like about this is the portability. So like I said in the middle of the night there's no, no way I'm going to run out to my sheds and start pouring gas into my generator because I like to keep them, keep them empty fire that up at two o'clock in the morning to keep my fridge going it having an ice maker in it i must keep it uh, running it throughout the night so i can run down to my garage grab this throw a bunch of my batteries on it get it into my kitchen plug my fridge and freezer in, go back to bed put my app beside me and i can know at any given time where my batteries are at and like i said if it goes on for any length of time i can hot swap batteries and worst comes to worst, next morning get up, plug it into my solar system after they've recharged up from here from the sunlight. And if worst comes to worst and it's a cloudy day and I don't have a lot of sunlight, I can go to this generator as well and plug it in. In our other videos, as you'll see, we'll have a 10,000 watt big champion one. That is also what they call a modified sine wave. It's not a pure clean power like the Generac or this. But believe it or not, Ego in their wisdom, they made these things that are so flexible and versatile that I can actually charge it off of something that's inferior, like a modified, like this, my generator, or the pure sine wave of that, household power. So there's lots of flexibility in it. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please feel free to put them down in the bottom in our comment section. We'd like to thank you very much for watching Gong Show Garage. And once again, please have a great day and hit subscribe and like.